Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. The age of the Egyptian pyramids has long been a contentious subject, and the dating evidence is minimal, subjective and speculative at best. Is the Khufu graffiti in the relieving chambers of the Great Pyramid real or a hoax by Howard Weiss? Can we take the radiocarbon dates of organic particles found between the blocks of the pyramids as evidence for when the stones were put in place? Is the Diary of Mera, the papyrus fragment from the time of Khufu, actually talking about transporting stone to build the Great Pyramid? Or was it some other structure at Giza? This is the type of evidence we have to work with when proving the age of the Great Pyramid. But to say the pyramids are far older than the 4th dynasty is no different than saying the Great Pyramid was created by Khufu. Where is the evidence? In fact, there is even less evidence to say they're far older than the Old Kingdom. Personally, I'm open to all interpretations, even the mainstream view. But we need to gather the evidence, however circumstantial, if we wish to find out the true age of the pyramids. I'm not trying to disprove the mainstream narrative, in fact I'm wholly willing to accept it. I just need to see the evidence either way. And this brings me to some relatively recent scientific work that was carried out not on the Great Pyramid, but on the Pyramid of Menkore, the smallest of the three large Giza pyramids. A pyramid that has an internal structure that screams of being rebuilt and enlarged at some point in history. It is also a pyramid that I'm sure was worked on in the later Sate period as well, due to an eyewitness account of Orphic gold tablets found inside the stone sarcophagus, as discussed in a previous video, and a wooden coffin that radiocarbon dates to this later period. In 2013, a paper was published regarding scientific tests known as surface luminescence dating on the Pyramid of Menkore. In a nutshell, this method of dating measures the light energy that is stored in stone. From this, we can get a date of when the stone was last worked. The Pyramid of Menkore is mainly made of limestone, but with the first 16 courses of the exterior made with granite, sometimes smooth and sometimes unfinished, with the pillow-like appearance and the famous protruding nubs. Experts believe that above these 16 courses, the pyramid was cased in white Chura limestone, just like the neighbouring pyramids, remnants of which we can see at the top of the Pyramid of Khafre. The reign of Menkore is not accurately defined. He was either the 5th or 6th king of the 4th dynasty, and experts believe he reigned for 18 or 28 years at some point between 2575 and 2465 BC. No, not massively accurate, but not bad. A lot of Egyptologists placed the start of his reign at 2490 BC. The technique of surface luminescence dating is quite a conclusive scientific approach, yet anomalous younger dates can and are explained by stone that has been reworked, but only of course if there is clear physical evidence of reworking as well. The scientists took a sample from the granite casing stone at the location shown here, the flattened area on the eastern face, and the date that came back from the testing was 3450 BC, plus or minus 950 years. This of course means the youngest date is 2500 BC. Scientifically, the pyramid we see in its current form cannot be any younger, which means that if we believe the conventional date of Menkore's reign of 2490 BC, then the pyramid at the very least was already 10 years old. Of course, Egyptologists can argue this point easily because the age of Menkore's reign is still disputed, and the youngest date of this pyramid casing stone of 2500 BC does fit between 2575 and 2465 BC, the range often quoted for Menkore's reign. So is that it? Has science finally proved that Menkore could have built the pyramid in the 4th dynasty? Well, in my opinion, no, because the age of the cut granite for the casing stone was 3450 BC plus or minus 950 years. In fact, the very oldest the pyramid could be is pre-dynastic at 4400 BC, which is nearly 2000 years before Menkore. Furthermore, the position where the sample was taken was on the flattened area of casing stone on the eastern face of the pyramid. And why is this area flattened? 
Stein van den Hoven believes there could be a concealed door at this location, as the only other flattened part of the casing stone is on the northern face around the entrance. But the eastern face of the pyramid butts up against Menkore's mortuary temple, a limestone structure that was certainly created by the 4th dynasty king, and therefore maybe this part of the pyramid was flattened by Menkore to allow for a close fitting to his mortuary temple. This seems logical and likely. Surface luminescence dating only dates when a stone was last worked. The date of 3450 BC, plus or minus 950 years, is therefore the date when this particular sample of granite casing was flattened. Was this flattening an original part of the process when the pyramid was complete, or was it done later when a newer structure was placed up against it? More work clearly needs to be done, and this is certainly a disappointing place to take a sample from to date the pyramid. It would have been far better to take a sample from the pillow-like unfinished granite casing stones, because then there would have been no question of whether or not these stones were reworked. The people that believe that the pyramids are far more ancient than dynastic history often use these granite casing stones as physical evidence of more ancient builders. They often say that this is clearly not the work of the dynastic Egyptians, comparing it to the pre-Inca stonework in Peru. And maybe they're right, but there is a scientific process that can prove it either way. I wholly accept that Menkore was associated with this pyramid because there are datable finds such as statues close by. There is also an inscription on the pyramid itself, thought to be made by Kenwazet, the son of Ramesses the Great in the New Kingdom, which associates the pyramid with Menkore. The Sate period kings also believe that Menkore was associated with the pyramid. They created a wooden coffin that was found inside and shown here, and they wrote Menkore's name onto it. And now, the date of the flattened granite on the outside of the pyramid, with the error margins taken into account, the sample does fit into the date range used by Egyptologists for Menkore's reign. But, I have to say, this anomalous piece of flattened wall is probably the worst place you can take a sample from to date the structure, and I hope that another sample can be taken and a new date can be obtained in the future. I would be happy to accept that Menkore built this pyramid, just as I would happily accept that it was built in pre-dynastic times, but we do need to see definitive scientific evidence either way. But the Pyramid of Menkore was not the only structure tested by surface luminescence. They also did similar tests on the Khafre Valley Temple and the Sphinx Temple, results I'll discuss in a future video due to their complex nature and the different ways the results can be interpreted. But one of the structures I will mention today is the Assyrian, the subterranean structure that is linked to the temple of 19th dynasty king Seti I, who reigned between 1290 and 1306 BC. The temple is the largest in Abydos, and the entire structure is of the highest quality inside and out. But the Assyrian is made of huge chunks of granite, quartzite and sandstone, all situated underground, invisible to the eye, and it would have been unknown to everybody except the Egyptian priests. Inside it almost has the appearance of an underground island surrounded by water. Egyptologists date the Assyrian to Seti I due to its proximity to the temple, but independent researchers have long disagreed, believing that this is a pre-dynastic structure due to it having a different architectural style. Well, the scientists tested it, and one of the samples does fall into the reign of Seti I, although the error margins are large, being 1300 BC plus or minus 500 years. The other result was more precise and also older, being 1980 BC plus or minus 160 years. This older age comes from what is believed to be the oldest part of the temple. Due to the social collapse in Egypt between 1800 and 1500 BC, it therefore means the oldest part of the Assyrian is Middle Kingdom. Therefore Seti I added to the structure and he didn't build it from scratch. Many won't be happy with the Middle Kingdom date for the Assyrian, but this is what the science says, from a sample taken from the huge granite pillars that showed no signs of being reworked, unlike the granite on the Menkore Pyramid. Obviously more samples should be taken to ensure accuracy, but these are interesting results nonetheless. 
This video will no doubt generate interest, as well as discussion, and I would love to hear your thoughts, so please leave your comments below. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.